What's up everybody, Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim. Gonna be playing a game on PTCGO today and I'm excited about today's video because I'm playing one of my favorite decks in standard format. I have been excited, stoked to show this off for a while now. It's been on my Patreon page here. I did it for an exclusive video. I showed off this list in part of the exclusive Patreon video I did for War Turtle subs earlier in the month, but now uh, I am showing it off for everybody here. This is my Shrine Lugia deck. I actually got into this card at like $5 a piece, ordered eight of them, uh, but Shining Lugia is like, like 20 bucks a piece now. Pretty crazy, kind of hard to get your hands on, and I highly suggest that, you know, if you have a way to get this card, it's definitely a good card to pick up. It could be good. It's the thing, I'm not like positive that it is like absolutely game-breaking format-breaking or anything like that, but I think the deck, uh, the card just definitely has potential. And the thing is, is that the card is very hard to get your hands on. The only way to get it is in an $80 box or $70 box, something like that, uh, box set. So there is that Shining Lugia there uh, with the Argent Wing and Aero Force attacks. Very cool card. I think it goes great with Malamar in this Malamar Shrine deck. Uh, and yeah, so we're going to roll some games with this, show the deck off a little bit, and kind of show you guys the core concepts behind what we got going on here. So I'm going to grab Lugia. And the cool thing about Lugia as well is that it just does really good against pretty much all of these like rogue decks, right? So any sort of rogue deck, uh, let's, let's get an escape rope. I actually like the escape rope. I think I want that. Or I could like try to dig for an Inke. But I think I like the escape rope just to get it into the active position, get my uh, Lugia out. I think ideally we would actually rather escape rope into like a, um, I'm thinking into like a Coco or something. So I'll just judge here. I'm going to save the escape rope and then hopefully we'll just draw into it later. So we've got our shrine out. My opponent's probably playing shrine as well. If they're playing a shrine deck at all, they might not be. They might be playing something totally different. Not totally sure. And then we're just going to end up passing this turn. I'll Ultra Ball next turn and then Oranguru from there. And uh, hopefully get to get to move it. But as you can see with a lot of Shrine decks, we really rely on this Oranguru and the Instruct ability to kind of help churn through our decks. And the cool thing about Malamar is that you also get to play Acro Bike and you feel pretty good about it. So you have Acro Bike to draw cards. You have Oranguru to draw cards. We're not playing Tapu Lele GX in our deck. I don't really think that that card is like worth playing in here. We have the one of Necrozma GX because that Black Ray GX can just end games, right? We spread with Tapu Koko. Uh, we kind of poke things with Shining Lugia a bit. And then like you could just win a game with that uh, Black Ray GX, take all six prizes in one turn pretty easily. So that was a pretty clutch top deck there. We are going to end up evolving and then ultra balling our hand away for something else. Probably looking for like a Coco uh, or something like that. I actually really want the Coco there. We're going to instruct for three. Obviously, we hope we hit a supporter uh, and something like that. So we'll, we'll see what we get off our instruct here. We've got ourselves a Lily and another Lugia. So that's really good as well. What I also love about Lugia is he doesn't have an ability. So really good against like those Weavile decks, things like that. Uh, let's see, at this point I can, um, hmm, we're a little bit limited in our options. I think I need to, uh, because we just have this Oranguru in the active position, and I don't necessarily want to just hard retreat, but I also don't want to let this uh, Latios like, poke at me anymore. I'm kind of like fed up with the Latios, so... I'm thinking that we can, uh, yeah, we can, you know, psychic recharge once onto my shining Lugia, and then attach for turn. Um, that's probably fine. The psychic recharge once onto the shining Lugia, and then we'll just attach the DF DCE, the D DPE, the DCE, and then we could psychic next turn. Uh, something that we have as an option available to us, so that's not so bad. And then uh, it's looking like that this is a shrine deck, so I'm like not super concerned about these and don't mind getting just like another NK in play. Uh, and then these next two cards are burnable so that I'll be able to draw more cards with Oranguru again. Uh, what we have to just hope, I guess we keep the, we definitely keep the rescue stretcher in case for some reason this Oranguru decides to go and get itself knocked out. 
Uh, and then we can rescue stretcher it back and continue drawing cards. So obviously Tapu Koko is your ideal starter here. You just want to start off flying, flipping your opponent, kind of softening everything up, you know, with shrine and flying flip. It's very easy to kind of whittle down your opponent's hit points. And then Shining Lugia just kind of like comes in and just knocks things out, right? Uh, with that Argent Wing attack, there's a lot of Pokemon in the format that have um, abilities, right? So doing 120 damage to any Pokemon with an ability is very good. There we go. We've got our second Malamar, so that's fantastic. And now I'm kind of in business and have a guaranteed, um, I have myself a guaranteed uh, knockout with this Lugia. I could attach, I guess I could recharge one more time, uh, so on and so forth. I could also Psychic, but I'm not knocking this thing out with Psychic, so I don't want to do that. Let's just go in here and then i think i will just rescue stretcher the um yeah i'll shuffle into the deck so that i can just do that and then instruct for three again here we go draw some more cards you see how much work orangaroo is putting in just tons of work right so i think at this point um probably just going to guzma and knock out the i mean i could guzma knock out the tapu coco i could harbor treat and knock out the active Latios. Both are like valid options. I kind of like hanging on to the Guzma just so that I have it in case I need to knock anything else out next turn. Let's just uh, Psychic Recharge, like we're definitely doing that. And then I think I'm gonna save the Guzma just so that I can kind of have a an out next turn. So there we go. Uh, and I'm going to Arrow Force, okay, because my opponent uh, actually does not have an ability, so we're not doing 120 there. Very good, and we get to take our prize. So like I was saying, Lugia is just super good against all these rogue decks that are popping up right now. Uh, this is just a very solid, you know, well-rounded archetype. And there's a lot of different options as to what you can do with this deck. There's a lot of Pokemon in here that I've considered playing and cut from the list. I mean, there is, uh, and look, so we're kind of cool. We got DC and Guzma in our hand, so that is going to be game there. But there's a lot of different Pokemon you can play. You can play the Tapu Lele that reorganizes damage on your opponent's side of the field. That was like cute at first, and I found myself like almost winning games with that, but I couldn't quite close games out with it. It wasn't quite working out. So we're just gonna arrow force for a game. Good game to my opponent. We're gonna roll on to a next game there and see if maybe we could get a little bit of a more substantial matchup. Uh, you also can play that Deoxys that has the same attack as that uh, as the old Mewtwo, the Mewtwo from Evolutions, right? So you can play that as well. It's another good just DC attacker where you could kind of just like poke your opponent, especially if they have a lot of energy on them. So that's another great option to consider for this deck. Right now we have the Pseudo Wudo in there just to prevent your opponent's Zorox from being able to one-hit KO your Lugias. That's like really important uh, because Zorok is probably your toughest matchup. When they start healing with like Acerola, Max Potion, things like that, it's not exactly what you want. And this, this hand's pretty good. We definitely don't mind this. Starting the Coco, starting the DCE, this is all very good. Uh, and I definitely, you know, I just like the deck. I mean, it's one of the few non-EX, non-GX decks that I've found that still draws well, even without, like, Zorark, even without Swampert, right? We don't have any of those, like, power draw, trade abilities, anything like that. But we have enough draw cards to get through our deck. And the deck is low maintenance enough that it doesn't really need it. I think Malamar is, like, one of the only archetypes that's, like, self-sufficient enough that it doesn't actually need, um, you know, kind of that extra draw engine of Zorark. I think a lot of setup decks, things like that, you need Zorark, you need Zorark in, able, in order to function just because the draw supporters aren't powerful enough. But in this deck, I mean, Oranguru and Acrobike, they really do get you there. It's really not a problem. So this is looking like a Zorark Greninja deck. So that should be interesting. I haven't actually seen this deck really in action at all i've like heard about it you know people were talking about it potentially when greninja gx got first revealed that you could partner it with zorark i haven't exactly seen that be successful yet but i mean the cards do have synergy they both like double colorless energy zorark can allow you to draw into some of the cards that would be very useful for a um for a Greninja deck, so that would be good. We're just gonna go ahead and slam down the Shrine of Punishment. I just am betting that my opponent does not play as many 
you know, stadium counters as I play stadiums. So I kind of just don't really mind throwing that down. And then we're just going to go in with a flying flip. We're going to hope that my opponent can't really do anything to just knock out this Coco on the first turn uh, or on their second turn of the game. I think this Coco is probably going to stick around. At most, they might be able to you know, hit me with a double colorless energy, but I'm going to have another turn here to kind of get some things going, which is going to be very good for me. See that double colorless turn, uh, you know, come down here, which, you know, that's, that's what I was thinking. A lot of these Zorak decks are not playing any sort of switching cards except for maybe Guzma. And other than that, like they don't play switch, they don't play escape rope. It's just Guzma and like Palpad maybe. So they might have multiple options to Guzma. They might have even Acerola to get things out of the active, but they usually don't play Switch anymore. I mean, obviously, Floatstone was a great card for Zoroark decks. There's not really a valid replacement uh, other than Switch or Escape Rope, and I really am a big fan of Escape Rope for reasons that I've detailed in almost every single video that I've released for the Sun and Moon on format. My opponent has a tragic Cynthia. They just Cynthia and do not get any sort of uh, aid for for their Zorax. No, uh, no aid for the Zoroas there. So they are just, uh, they're out here just struggling. So I, on the other hand, am fine. We're just going to Cynthia here and we're going to hope that we draw into some other Pokemon, Ultra Ball, things like that. There we go. That's very good. So I'm down with this. We could just slap a DCE onto this guy and then I'm going to go Ultra Ball away actually to Guzmas. And the kind of no-brainer card that we get here is another Tapu Koko. So I'm going to explain that choice here. Obviously, we've got two Zeruas at 20, you know, uh, 20 damage each. We're about to flying flip again. But then also, we just want to have free retreat so that if we do eventually get to get some psychic energies in the discard pile, then we can promote the Coco, psychic recharge to our Lugia, and kind of go from there. So Kind of the, you know, that's the kind of flow of the deck. You just get things kind of moving that way. You want to have, you know, Tapu Cocos. So here we've got Acro Bike. That's great. We actually don't, oh, we actually like really like that Pseudo Wudo. So that wouldn't be bad to have him play at all. But I think you just pick the Rescue Stretcher so that then you can, you know, make your decision as to what you want. Uh, after the second Acro Bike here. So we've got another Rescue Stretcher. I think at this point we probably just grab the Cynthia there and I like the idea of the um, of the pseudo wudo in this matchup I mean I don't think that I necessarily need to get two Malamars out for this we should be able to just kind of move with one for now so let's just retreat into this guy and I think you know a fresh flying flip that's pretty good let's just wait till next turn see what my opponent does uh, no, let's rescue Stretcher now. Yeah, we'll put a Pokemon from our discard pile in our hand. We're just going to grab the Pseudowoodo. So now we have both rescue Stretchers in the discard pile, though. So that can get a little bit sketchy. We do need to be a little bit careful there. But I think I'm probably going to be fine. I'm putting a lot of pressure on my opponent here with the Shrines. Uh, you know, we're, we're pretty much cool. We're good to go. I mean, my opponent, if they decide to target down this Malamar, they're ignoring the fact that they're just getting, like, flying flipped in the face. Uh, and they actually, now that I'm thinking about it, they may have just had Zoroarks in hand, but wanted to avoid Shrine. Uh, wanted to definitely avoid that Shrine uh, that shrine damage there. So that was probably a heads-up play by my opponent. They realized that they didn't want to give any extra... They didn't want to give any extra, you know, damage to their Zorark for free, so they just decided to hold it. The Pseudo Wudo is also really good because uh, unless they can get themselves a Devoured Field, they're also not knocking out Tapu Koko. So the Pseudo Wudo is actually super relevant for a lot of math in this matchup. Uh, they can't knock out the, I think so, right? Yeah, yeah, they can't knock out the Shining Lugia. They can only do a max of 110 because they can only have five Pokemon in play. And they can't knock out this Tapu Koko unless they get Devoured Field. So very good there. Uh, obviously, they do have Greninja, so they can kind of clean things up that way. But with only four bench spots, you know, they're going to be constrained for space as well. And we see my opponent kind of start to feel the pressure. Obviously, at 40 damage apiece, they have to start slamming these Zoroarks down. 
They can't actually just let the Zeruas get knocked out. That is like not an option. But these Cocos, these Cocos are gonna stay living here for a while. They are they are out here for the long haul, which is absolutely great. And we've got a choice band for one now, so that is even better. We're just gonna do that. And then I think that I actually like I could instruct now. Uh, I actually like I don't really have a super high interest in just knocking out this Tapu Lele or anything like that. I think let's uh, let's actually Cynthia. We'll Cynthia first, and then we'll see if we get like Ultra Ball and some stuff. Well, we've got a lot of Psychic Energy, but no Ultra Ball. And there is our Necrozma. I think we actually just take the Necrozma and let that lily go. That lily is like not actually gonna see play for us really anytime soon. So that's, uh, you know, that's fine. I think I'm just gonna start attaching to my Shining Lugia kind of just, you know, by hand here and then we're just gonna do things the hard way. And then we're gonna fly and flip. So this game, as you can see, could end pretty quickly if I can get both of these Zoroarks up into like critical range where they just get knocked out by Black Ray GX, then I am pretty much just in the clear. And we might not even need Black Ray GX. We just very well may not. You know, we could just get there with Tapu Kokos and Shining Lugia alone. Uh, the deck is really that crazy. What is, this is a Frubbles. What is Frubbles? Uh, is this a, uh, is that the name of uh, Froki's ability? I guess so, Frubbles. It sounds like it's not English, but it is English. Uh, <laughs> Frubble, is it Froki Bubbles? That's what it is. Okay, my opponent finally kicks the Shrine of Punishment, and they've got their own Brooklet Hill now, so things are going to be slowing down for me a little bit. Uh, fortunately, I am out of range for my opponent to, like, double knock me out with Tapu Koko. That would be super annoying if they were able to do that. We've also got Aqua Patch, so they're getting some energy onto that Froki. But I've got a couple of turns until that Froki really becomes a big deal. I mean, really just, uh, you know, when it becomes that Greninja, that is super annoying because there's pretty much no point in damaging that Greninja GX because they're just going to be able to haze slash get that thing back into the deck. I also know if my opponent ever GX attacks with that thing, they're probably going to be pretty hype on knocking out my my only Malamar, right? So that's also an issue. Let's see here. I think at this point, uh, let's see, 20, yeah, okay. I think I attach my choice band here um, and actually just take the knockout on this on this Lele. I think I also attach another Psychic Energy to this guy and then I just Lily. I don't want to reveal my Necrozma yet. That's like important. We would just definitely not like to do that. So we're trying to not... Uh, because my opponent will just very clearly target that down. Uh, that's kind of like obvious. So we're just going to flying flip, put some more pressure on, and kind of just continue doing our thing here uh, with flying flip. And now we are in like a a game winning scenario where we could just like definitely win with, and that ultra ball actually like really helps. Um, we could just win the game actually since we got that ultra ball top deck we can win the game uh, this next turn. If they don't alter my hand at all, I, I just win. So that's a big deal. It looks like they're going for the flying flip. They're gonna like snipe the Coco, flying flip. Uh, they've attached the energy, so I know that they're flying flipping. Um, and I think that at this point, I definitely just promote Lugia and we just have game. So we see how easy this game is to win if my opponent just doesn't have any sort of healing cards. And that's the biggest weakness of this deck, honestly, is just, you know, they kind of see that. And you guys saw, if they didn't judge me or anything like that, I was just going to promote the Lugia, you know, Ultra Ball Away, Psychic Energy, Psychic Recharge, DCE, Black Ray GX. That was game. And it was that easy. So let's roll one more here with the Shrining Lugia. I'm calling it Shrining Lugia. Lugia attack because it's trying to punishment and Lugia. See how we do with one more game here. There's a bunch of different ways that you could play uh, this deck as well. I mean, uh, like you could put a Lele in here. I don't think the Lele is necessary at all. Ranguru is definitely, definitely good enough to get there. Um, the, you know, the Tapu Lele, the that. Uh, one, the, the non GX, like that lets you rearrange damage counters. That, in my opinion, is not. It's just not as strong because you 
don't actually like actively do any damage, right? So I think like every single turn, you just want to be damaging your opponent. Uh, that card could be good just to, you know, just to have it as an option, but the list is pretty tight, uh, all things considered. And I feel like the Lugia is just so good. I definitely put a lot of value on the Lugia here. This looks like it could be a Buzzgarb Shrine deck. And that's what I'm saying is like, I am just so like tired of playing like big GX decks and playing against these annoying Shrine decks. So it's almost like if you can't beat them, join them. This is definitely uh, my favorite one. And it is a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton of fun to play. And it's just, uh, you know, it's smooth. I love it. Okay, this is Zorark Garbodor, so not Buzzgarb Shrine. There just must also be some fighting Pokemon in there. Probably is Sledgehammer um, Buzzwell with rainbows for the for the Garbs. It's, if I had to guess, that's probably what I'm imagining here. So we're going to get ourselves a nice flying flip off. Let's do that. We're also going to acro bike. Uh, I would like my Oranguru, please. So let's, let's grab that. Um, and we'll ditch the Ultra Ball. We're going to put the Oranguru down. I think we just slap this Shrine of Punishment down as well. And then let's just Cynthia. Uh, I'm not going to put the Choice Band down yet in case my opponent, you know, really dives in there with the, um, in case my opponent dives in there with the, uh, the good old Field Blower. So we've got two items down. It's not enough to knock out my Coco. Let's go Flying Flip, do some damage, and kind of go from there. And you can see, you know, I don't really, there's not really enough stadium counters being played in standard format right now or field blowers or anything like that to even really worry about just throwing the shrine down like i know i probably play more stadiums and more stadium you know more stadiums and stuff like that than my opponent like i just know that i do so i'm pretty confident just slamming that down and just being like all right what are you going to do about it and if they counter it then I'm, i just have another one you know and we're just going to keep putting those down i i didn't really especially off of cynthia turn one it's like i don't really want to just like hold it and be greedy with my resources and then draw into a hand with like three shrines and just feel silly so we're just going to start playing that out so we don't draw it back uh for sure and then what does my opponent got? They've got a Cynthia. So they're going to be going in. They've got the energy on this already. They may just decide to stomp off. They've got an Enhanced Hammer. All Zorark decks are playing Enhanced Hammer. That is not a surprise at all. But you see, they've got to start to stabilize. They have to start to set this deck up. They actually Ultra Balled away a Max Potion. So they do play Max Potion. That is good info for us to just be aware of. But I think if we can just go and get... Um, if we can go and get our, um, what, our pseudo wudo, we definitely want to get that pseudo wudo if we can. So let's do this, and then we're just going to Cynthia again. My opponent is going to be as smart as they can be and just, like, really not give me any sort of freebies as far as um, they don't want to just take, you know, shrine damage. So they're going to hold those Zoroarks as long as they can. And let's see, we've still got just two items in the discard pile. Fantastic turn for me. I've got my Malamars up, and we're ready to roll here. So let's just flying flip again, and we're just going to continue putting that pressure on. You know, they can hold those, uh, you know, Zoroarks if they want to, but, you know, at the end of the day, they will eventually have to put, put them down in order to draw cards. There comes a Lele as well, so that is really good for me too. And they still, uh, they kind of need a they need something, right? They can't just have this Garbodor in the active, just trash lanching for 40 into a Tapu Koko. Like, I will eventually... Okay, so they're going to stack something on top of their deck to help them out with this. And I wonder if it's going to be, like, a switch card, uh, DCE. Um, it's, uh, it could be, could be anything. They may decide to go for Acid Spray. So they might just put a DCE onto this Garbodor and think that, you know, Acid Spray is probably their best option because that actually does get the knockout on this Tapu Koko, which would be a valid advancement of this board state for sure. And then we are going to see that. So that's a big deal. They also get the Field Blower and kind of save themselves a little bit of time there. So I am going to be relying here on my own uh, on my own Oranguru to help draw me out of this. We're going to promote Tapu Koko. And I definitely want to get some Psychic Energies into the discard pile if I can. So let's do that. I think that I just kind of slow roll this. Uh, I think that I just attach to... Um, let's see here. 
I don't want to go in with this guy yet. Obviously, he's weak to Psychic. That's no good. Uh, I do want to find a DCE if I can. So I think, I mean, I could just go all in and just, you know, put the Necrozma down. That is like kind of a feel bad, though. I don't really want to do that. I feel like we just kind of slow roll this. Let's just retreat um, into... Oranguru, and then I'm just going to Guzma up this Trubbish here and promote my own Coco. And then let's instruct for two and see what we end up getting here off of it. We've got, oh, sure enough, there's the DCE. That's fine. Um, this is this is okay. So at least this hand that I have now, I can actually, you know, and we do have Shrine damage, so we're not doing like nothing this turn, but I can actually get in there with Lugia and use that Argent Wing attack next turn, and I can still draw two more cards with Oranguru, so that is good. And we didn't really use any more items, so we are still kinda cool in that regard as well. If my opponent doesn't have a way to get this Trubbish out of the active position, then we're just going to Flying Flip Town, and we could just Flying Flip again, which will be very good. But they could, oh, they're literally, their, their hand is DCE and Field Blower. They're just going to play it uh, and get to Acid Spraying again for 70 damage. So that is cool for me. I actually, you know, if I can get a way to, let's see. Oh, we have Cynthia. That's very good for us. So they have a zero card hand. We would be very well off to like knock this thing out, but they don't have an ability, so we're only doing 60 damage. So I think we kind of just have to flying flip one more time. So let's do that. That would be super good for us for sure. And then, because that brings that Garbodor's hit points down. And then let's just Cynthia. And we really want to get ourselves like some energy in the discard pile. We're just kind of like, you know, we're kind of digging for it at this point. I think that, I mean, getting this Tapu Coco down here is is really good too. And I think that, let's see, I think I'm safe to just play this Acro Bike here. So we've got Judge and Lily. I think, I don't really want to give my opponent any more cards in their hand. So I'm feeling like Lily is like better for me. Um, but I mean, if they really like tee off, obviously I'll wish I had judge, but I kind of, this is kind of like a little bit of a dutter hand, but I think that I'm going to go with Lily, um, and just be fine with that. And then let's just flying flip. Obviously a little bit of hangups here, getting those psychics into the discard pile, still looking for them. We've seen three DCE, which is great, but you know, no psychics in the discard pile. They're going to trade away the only card in their hand, which is a nest ball for two more cards. And if those cards don't net them anything good, they are just acid spraying again, but it's fine. They are gonna go up on prizes by doing that. They do find a mysterious treasure though, meaning that they're gonna be able to go for Lele and draw themselves some more cards. So that is interesting. Uh, that is definitely, definitely good for them. That is great uh, on their part. They have played two field blowers so far. I'm wondering if they play a third or if they play any devoured field or anything like that or if there's any other card that I have to look out for as far as like, um, you know, getting these shrines out of play is concerned. I'm sure if my opponent has something that is going to help them, they will just slam it down as soon as they find it. So this is uh, definitely tough for me, I guess. If they don't, if they knock out this Coco and do not discard my stadium, I'm a little bit of a tough spot. So maybe I should have kept the judge instead. It was just a tough call. Uh, I didn't, you know, they had a zero card hand, so it wasn't feeling super great, but it's fine. It's still at this point, I just have three items in the discard pile, so still not a ton, but even, you know, even if we get to the point where I love how the flip on Acid Spray still goes through, even though, you know, the Coco is knocked out, he's already dead. Why do you have to flip for the Acid Spray effect? Okay, so at this point, I'm not drawing a ton of cards off of this Lily. So that is the Cynthia. All right, we get a Cynthia to save the day, which is very good. At this point, I feel like I don't really want to play down um, the Pseudo Wudo. I don't really want to save, you know, we didn't get it down early enough, so it's not really an option there. We just have to Cynthia and hope that we draw into like Ultra Ball and some Psychic Energies. That's what we wanted. We didn't quite get there. So let's see, can we at least get a psychic energy or an ultra ball or something. No, okay, nothing. Uh, we get nothing here. So 
That is just so sad. How have we not been able to put one of these psychic energies in the discard pile yet? Let's go, um, let's go escape rope. I kind of like that um, as a card right now. I already have a choice band in my hand. And I think I'm just gonna go in and hypnosis uh, and try to, at least then I kind of just, you know, if I could put this thing to sleep, then I kind of just, you know, keep the board state where it is, and I give myself another turn of shrine damage, so that's fine. And we kind of just hold on here, and if my opponent knocks out the NK, then I finally get myself a Psychic Energy in the discard pile. They did discard a Guzma, I saw, but they probably, honestly, let's you know, let's be honest, they're gonna be able to get a Guzma probably to get out of this. But if they do, uh, Evolving the Second Zerua there, they're kind of showing me, I mean, they obviously don't want the Zerua to get knocked out. But they may be able to just, you know, trade into their other Guzma and be able to, you know, go in with somebody. Uh, I think they obviously want to attack with this Garbodor here, but that thing's also got 60 damage on it. So they're both kind of fair game to get knocked out by this Shining Lugia. If I were, oh, it stays asleep. So this is literally ideal scenario for me. This is exactly what I wanted, just to buy more turns. So <clears throat> at this point, we can retreat into Coco and we can Psychic Recharge and we can Guzma knock something out uh, with my Shining Lugia. So that's kind of like perfect. That's exactly where I want to be. Um, we could also uh, retreat and we could Flying Flip again, except I don't really want to do that either. I think that, you know, I'm kind of cool where I'm at. Uh, we could knock out a Zorark. I feel like knocking out the Zoroarks is like probably just ideal. So if we do 120, 150, 160, we can knock out the cleanest Zorark over here, which is like really good for us. So let's just do it. Let's retreat into Coco. And then we're gonna put this here uh, and we're gonna Psychic Recharge. Yep. And here we go. So now we're going to go ahead and Guzma up this guy and we are doing 150 damage, so that's perfect. I've got the escape rope in my hand as well, and I can instruct, so I'm gonna save that escape rope just in case I get myself into a weird situation. Got a backup shrine, got a backup Lugia, I've got two, you know, I've got three psychic energy in play, so we're finally there. This is fantastic, so that's perfect for me. Uh, we were able to take out one, and at this point, uh, pretty much, they can't max potion everything, so as long as I could just get that Necrozma into play, we are just going to win. And you can see how quickly we've kind of caught up here. I think, how many items? Four, five, okay, I am at five. One, two, three, four, five. So they're doing 100 right now. And if they get a field blower, that's six, but that's still not a knockout. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, yep. Yeah. So even if they field blower my one choice ban, still not a knockout with Garbodor on this Shining Lugia. The Shining Lugia is just gonna be an ultimate pain for them to deal with. There is nothing, nothing good about this. And they probably have to just go, uh, let's see, their Ace or other one, that's fine. Uh, if they don't knock out this Lugia right now, I have literally Guzma knockout on the Lele. So that's where I'm gonna go with like my next turn. They can't heal everything. They're probably gonna throw like Max Potion, Ace Arola back into the deck, but I am just kind of gunning for them now and I kind of have the game in my sights pretty easily just because the Shining Lugia is just such a hoss out here in the active, just really taking advantage of things. And we see how easily this game could just like fall apart for my opponent here. Let's, uh, yeah, let's just go take out this Tapu Lele um, you know, with the 50 damage on it, that's fine. Uh, and then eventually my opponent's going to have to put something, uh, you know, they're going to have to put something into play, right? Uh, they can't just like ignore forever. So let's uh, let's just do that. Uh, I think I'm fine more or less just keeping this psychic energy in my hand in case I need it for anything. So that feels fine. And then let's just Argent Wing here. So we're gonna knock that thing out. And let's keep in mind my opponent has no way to draw cards either. They have no way to draw more cards. Oh, my pseudo Udo was prized. So no wonder I wasn't seeing that. They do not have a Zorark out. They do have a pretty big hand though. So like their hand is big. They, you know, they definitely can just probably lean on that, um, you know, to make some plays here. But they absolutely, like, have to heal this Lele or else that's just, uh, you know, 
insanely problematic. And since I only have two prizes left, if they do something like resource management again, uh, all I have to do is just knock out these Garbodors as well. I can trade with the Garbodors with Psychic Sphere. I mean, Malamar knocks out Garbodor. If they start going in with them, uh, that's just uh, bad news for them as well. So that's going to be, it's it's pretty much a wrap. And we just see how kind of, how well this is working out. Uh, even with an Ace Rolla play on the Lele, like, <clears throat> Shining Lugia is doing 150 damage to a Lele with a Choice Band on it. That's a lot. I mean, if, you know, this Lele right here, if I had Guzma on that Lele, it would be game because that Lele is going to be taking 10 damage in. Let's see, they're going to confuse me. Too bad. I've got Escape Rope, so that's not really going to cut it either. Let's see, we've got another Shining Lugia. That's totally fine. I'm just going to escape rope. My opponent can promote anything, and it's not going to be that Lele because I will win if they promote the Lele. So they've got to promote something else, and uh, it's probably just going to be, uh, you know, a Garbodor. They have to promote a Garbodor, and then I can just knock it out with whatever I want. So uh, we're going to go ahead, and I think... I just, we evolved the third Malamar. That's like probably fine. Uh, I can't actually psychic recharge on anything. So I think I just, yeah, we just knocked this thing out here. And I'm doing 60 damage. So that is enough. I don't actually need to commit my psychic energy anywhere. So let's just do that. And we'll Argent Wing for knockout. Now my opponent <clears throat> has to promote something fresh. I mean, they have to promote something uh, like this Zorark. They kind of have to go in with the Zorark here. They're promoting the Oranguru, though, so maybe maybe not. Maybe they're not going to go in with that Zorak. I mean, I feel like knocking out this Lugia with the Oranguru just, and that feels bad. And also, they're not even two-hit KOing this Lugia with that Oranguru, so that's like an ultimate kind of feel-bad situation here. We're also in a scenario, I mean, like, now at this point, we've got one prize left. They're going to judge me, and I'm actually kind of stoked on that. Like, that's not a problem at all because now I get to actually see some new cards here. And I know that my hand, I like know my deck is good. I know that I've got a lot of good cards left in that deck because I haven't actually played, you know, a ton of stuff yet. I've still got three Ultra Balls in there, which I know can go get my uh, my Ultra Necrozma to kind of, you know, finish this game out. And then with that, just free retreating Coco on the bench, your board, your board position is just like totally solidified with that on the bench there and you know you're kind of just good to go and this in my opinion is just uh you know kind of you know unequivocally the best shrine deck so let's uh let's see here all right so we can escape rope they'll promote the zorark which is like not what they want to do but kind of what they have to do uh i could also um they kind of would have to do that i think I could also hard retreat. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Let's just, uh, yeah, let's just escape rope again. Let's see what they do. So we'll we'll see how they do when they who they promote. It's probably gonna be the Zor. Yep, that's fine. So we're gonna go there. This thing's got 60 on it. I feel like I just hit it, you know, for whatever I can. That just feels like it makes the most sense. So we're just gonna retreat into this guy and just crack that uh, crack that thing for as much damage as we can. Eventually, my opponent will have to knock out this Lugia. They can't just ignore it forever. So, you know, that's fine with me. And, you know, if they knock it out with, a, at this point, they would have to evolve into a clean Zorark here and knock it out with a clean Zorark. And that's the only way they can proceed forward without losing. So they have to Ace Arola it. And they have to find themselves another DCE, of which I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, they've got two DCE in play, so they have to have their third uh, oh, they actually only have five cards left in deck, so and they might have prized a DC as well. You never know, but that's the only way they kind of get out of this. That or Max Potion, I believe they do have a Max Potion, but they Guzma as their supporter for turn. I've got DCE in hand for game here. Um, actually, it's not game. I don't have a Psychic in my discard pile, do I? And they have Max Potion. Okay, so that's tough situation for me. They're going to resource management here. Uh, I just need a Psychic Energy in my discard pile. Um, let's see here. And they're going to try and like, they're going to try and loop me. I think I do have all three Guzmas down. That is horrible for me. So they could actually stick me here. If they like, if they get it, they could deck me out, which is really bad. But actually we just win the game because I top deck that ultra ball. So that is fantastic. All right. We finally got there. Good stuff. I had to be, I should have probably been a little bit more careful 
with my, uh, you know, with my escape rope there and just like realized that that was my last switch card. But fortunately enough, we were able to finally get another psychic energy in the discard pile. And we're going to be able to close this one out here. So good stuff. Let's go ahead and retreat and win with that arrow force for 130 there. Uh, and no finessing here. We win six prizes, two, two. Uh, so awesome stuff there. And I feel like you guys uh, were able to kind of get a decent picture of how this deck works. Uh, I think just being able to promote non GX Pokemon every single turn and, you know, uh, just, uh, you know, chip away at your opponent throughout the course of the game. Even if they play healing cards, it's no guarantee. Even if they play counter stadium cards, no guarantee they're going to see it. The draw in this format is just so weak that Shrine is just such a powerful card. Uh, really, really cool stuff. So this is the list that I was working with there. And like I said, throughout the course of the video, there are a bunch of different ways that you can play this, a lot of different card inclusions that you can use. But I found that this is pretty much the core, just, uh, you know, this is the core of the deck right here. And this is kind of, you know, everything that you feel like you need. The pseudo Wudo is like, yeah, it's good sometimes. And then sometimes it's like, okay, well now I don't want them to bump anything because that's just, uh, it's a liability. So it's like, sometimes you use it, sometimes you don't. Two rescue stretchers, great as well. You just always want to bring your things back. I mean, they're constantly getting knocked out. You want to bring things like Tapu Koko back into play all the time. You want to bring Lugias back into play. You want to get that Oranguru back into play as well. Oranguru is actually so important to the functioning of this deck that you might decide to play two. It's like that big of a deal. And then everything else is pretty straightforward here. I mean, the Lily's just a really ideal turn one supporter. And then since we don't play Lele, we just play four, right? So we're either looking to Lele or Cynthia early on, uh, or you're going to use Ultra Ball. And instead of getting Lele, you just go Ultra Ball for the Oranguru. I've seen other lists playing Mysterious Treasure, just completely not necessary uh, in this list, in my opinion. Uh, I think if you decided to play Latios, Deoxys, and the mini Tapu Lele, like then you can make a better argument for Mysterious Treasure. But even then, uh, I saw like the deck gets out who it needs to get out, and it's not that big of a deal. The only reason I was able to, I was struggling to get Psychic Energies into the discard that last game it's just because I was drawing like weird hands. I mean, really didn't see Ultra Ball. I just didn't see Ultra Balls and Psychics in the same hands until like a long time into the game. And I just wasn't hitting Psychic Energies on any of my Acro Bikes, which is another way to get those Psychics into the discard pile as well. Uh, oh yeah, and the card in the top right of the list here is Acro Bikes. So anyways, let me know what you guys think of the Shining Lugia Shrine of Punishment deck in the comments below. Thank you all for watching the video. Make sure to like the video, sub to the channel, ring that bell, check out the Etsy store and the Patreon stuff in the description below the uh, deck discussion on the patreon wall has been a huge success so far so shout out to everybody contributing uh you know to that and it's been an awesome experience for me so we're doing that every week for squirtle and war turtle subs just deck discussions on certain deck lists every week where i answer you guys questions there thank you all for watching peace